Okay, hi there, welcome to a micro video. Uh, in this short video, we're going to take a look at two calculations of income elasticity of demand. Well, income elasticity of demand, or YED for short, measures the responsiveness of quantity demanded for a product to a change in our incomes. And the formula, always worth putting in the answer, is the percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in income. We use the data on the coefficient of income elasticity to identify different types of products. So for a normal necessity, uh, the income elasticity is positive, greater than zero, but the coefficient will be less than plus one. Whereas for normal luxury products, yes, income elasticity demand is positive, people buy more, as income rises, this time the coefficient is greater than plus one. People are very sensitive to their income levels. There's also a category of products known as inferior goods, where the income elasticity of demand is negative. As incomes go up, people buy less. Here are two calculations to, to work at. First one concerns local bus journeys in the UK. And we're told that the number of journeys uh, fell by 100 million to 4.4 billion in the UK, in England in 2018, whilst at the same time, over the same period, incomes went up by 1.5%. So we're using this data to calculate the income elasticity of demand and comment on the nature of bus journeys as a service. So first of all, we know that incomes have changed by plus 1.5%. So the only data crunch we need to do is the percentage change in demand for bus journeys. Now, they've fallen by 100 million to 4.4, so they must have been 4.5 billion in 2017. So the percentage change is 100, or minus 100, over the original 4,500 times by 100. And that gives a percentage change in demand of minus 2.22%. Put the numbers into the formula. Uh, income assist is therefore minus 2.22 divided by plus 1.5, giving a negative income elasticity of demand of minus 1.48. What does that tell us about bus journeys? Well, a negative income elasticity suggests that local bus travel is probably best described as an inferior good. People may decide to take a taxi or maybe can afford a, a higher car or a car of their own or some other form of transport rather than taking the bus as their income goes up. Of course, it depends on individual circumstance. Here's our second example. Let's look at the market for whey protein. And we're told that the USA market for sports protein powders was just under $4 billion in 2017, but grew to in excess of $4 billion in 2018. In the same year, average disposable income grew by 1.4%. Given this information, calculate the income elasticity of demand for sports protein powders. OK, well, we know what the change in income is, so therefore we need to think about the change in demand in percentage terms. And uh, the change in spending, uh, well, the, the change is 0 0.29 billion, so quite a significant increase there. Um, the change is, you know, from 3.94 to 4.23 is 0.29 billion, divided by the original, which was 3.94, times by 100, giving a percentage change in just one year of plus 7.36%. Quite a significant increase. Set against the percentage change in income, which was just 1.4%. Put the figures into the formula. Income elasticity is therefore plus 7.36, divided by plus 1.4, which gives a figure of plus... 5.3 to one decimal place. What does this tell us? Well, it suggests a very high income elasticity of demand, plus 5.3, and that would allow us to categorize whey protein as a sports supplement, as a normal luxury good. There we go, two examples of how to calculate income elasticity of demand.